Hi everybody, welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, where I'm Mark, a former dive instructor, doing my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. Uh, if you do have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comment section under this video and use this Ask Mark hashtag to, uh, in your comment to get yourself and a question, or your question, sorry, featured in an upcoming video. Uh, but I do type out an answer in the comment section so that you do get an answer as soon as possible and you don't have to wait for the video to come out because it can take a few weeks. Uh, today I'm answering a question from Sparky ABQ about save a dive kits on liverboards. So they say, hi Mark, I carry a pretty extensive Save a Dive kit with me when I dive locally. I've even taken it when I've traveled by land domestically. My wife and I are getting ready for our first liverboard and I remember you describing these as floating dive shops. So my question is, do I need to bring my kit a scaled down kit or no kit at all on a liverboard? Um, so liverboards are pretty tight on storage space so they won't have a ton of spares. Uh, in my experience, you can normally find a toolbox with some basic tools, uh, like screwdrivers, a few adjustable spanners and stuff. Uh, they typically have a nitrox analyzer, so don't worry too much about bringing one of those, but I personally bring as much as you can for anything that you can think might fail, because they may have a spare set of regulators, but no promises it obviously depends on the boat and everything but it tends to be more like um uh, uh, manuals for courses they, they tend to have a few of those could because you can sign up for um like learning courses on the liverboard as far as equipment though mm, not a great deal especially as soon as you leave um so it, it's best to get your stuff out what well, how it usually happens is you turn up on day one and you you rock up on board and then you have a bunch of paperwork to uh, to fill out and there's a whole bunch of um, like safety briefings and things about the boat and diving in general um, and then you can like start setting up your equipment so take that opportunity to get everything out check it over make sure there's nothing damaged hook it up onto a cylinder pressurize it make sure your regulators work and everything make sure your bcd works uh your mask your fins and everything all your like dsmb and bits and bobs that you're uh, that you're bringing with you just have a quick double check that nothing's been damaged during transport and uh and make sure that yeah everything is working nice and fine you've already done this before you've left home but it's best to do it again after air travel and whatnot because the baggage handlers aren't the most friendly um to bags at least i'm sure they're lovely people but um so then that's that is the best time to find something that's gone wrong because you're still like moored up and you still have uh, like access to the mainland and then uh, then they should be able to get you hopefully get you um, some kind of spare or or like rental thing but then as soon as you leave uh, then it can be quite tough to get any kind of spare parts. So you might find um, uh, that their toolbox does have like a replacement O-ring and things. You're probably going to get replacement O-rings, uh, but mainly for like tank O-rings, you're not going to get really specialist, obscure ones. So uh, so do be quite careful with that. But yeah, as far as like what I tend to bring. I don't bring like replacement fin straps, but that's just because my fins have metal springs. Um, but if you do have like ratchet, uh, like rubber ratchet uh, straps on your fins, then yeah, have a good look at them all over. If there's any like nicks or cuts or wear, then yeah, they can split if you put too much force on it and then you only have one fin. So it's good to bring a replacement. Mask straps as well. Um, otherwise, yeah, basic tools. I tend to bring a, um, a, a what you call it, a, an adjustable spanner with me just in case. And I tend to bring a uh, an Allen key that fits my first stages. Uh, luckily, on Apex regulators, they're all the same size, so you only need one. But on some regulators, you can have a different, or you can require a different size Allen key for the high pressure and low pressure ports, just in case I need to move anything around. It's just kind of useful. Um, I don't tend to bring replacement hoses. That's that's a bit excessive. But again, it's one of those things you do just kind of check just to make sure. Um, 
yeah, it's a tricky question. I'd rather have too much uh, than not enough. Uh, when I was teaching, I have brought spare regulators before because I don't tend to bring too much as far as clothing uh, and my travel equipment anyway is pretty light. So um, so it's quite easy for me to get like under the baggage allowance and to uh, to give me like extra, uh, extra space. But um, yeah, otherwise, not a huge amount of, uh, of spares. It's more about like the preparation, checking your dive equipment beforehand, and making sure that everything's fine, getting your regulator serviced a good month or two ahead of time, uh, and then doing a check dive at home so that you know that they're working and they're going to work properly, uh, checking the mouthpiece that there's no holes in it or anything, checking over your mask, your fins, your essentials and stuff. Um, that's what I tend to spend or uh, like invest most of my time in instead of like bringing replacement parts. But uh, yeah, if something does fail, on a uh, on a liverboard and you don't have a replacement that really is it so double check well ahead of times dive computer batteries torch batteries all that kind of stuff make sure you've got your uh, usb cables and things um and, and you should survive yeah liverboards are great um and they do have like everything that you need but they're not going to have tons of uh, of like replacement parts especially for obscure things so um so don't rely on them to have replacement parts um but more about it is is like the the lead up to it so that you are prepared you do have as much as possible and you have checked your dive equipment so that you shouldn't need a um, a, a replacement part but my usual advice is try and bring as much as you can um before you go over your, your baggage allowance, obviously. So um, yeah, bring bring what you expect could fail, but um, don't don't go too crazy. Um, yeah, it is a good question. And when when you're going on your very first liverboard, it can be quite daunting because yeah, you are out at sea for like a good five six days. So yeah, you are quite self reliant. So it's best that you do double check your dive equipment and uh, and only bring what you actually need because they are quite tight on space that's why it's best to have like bags like big kit bags that like flatten down to nothing because they'll they'll have to store it that is incredible what they do and it is usually like underneath seats in certain areas if you lift up the cushion you're like oh that's where all of our bags go um but yeah um don't go too crazy as far as bringing spares. Try and prepare ahead of time. Um, but if you've got any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, use this Ask Mark hashtag to get yourself featured in an upcoming video. Uh, remember to head over to scubadivermag.com and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already because I have swapped channels if you haven't noticed. It's been a few months now. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.